My name is Matthew Cialino, and this is the Professional Certification Benchmark data set, the first 500 jobs for large language models. Um, this is written by uh, David Nover and myself, a company out of Huntsville, Alabama, here in the US, um, called People Tech, mainly focusing on uh, computer vision research, amongst many other things. So let's get started. Um, say a resume came across your desk and uh, it contains everything they were looking for in a position. Let's say you were hiring for um, someone to deploy a machine learning model to the cloud and you wanted someone to manage the team that was running this project. Um, you have the certified data scientist um, certification, the AWS certification, and the Scrum certification. So this would be the perfect resume for you, for your job. Um, while this um, would probably get the second interview, um, and it would certainly get your attention, um, it may not, uh, this person may not get the job exactly, but that, that's what this paper is about. Um, we're trying to see um, if there's a role to consider the machine as both a trustworthy personal assistant and as a prospective new hire. So let's go look into exactly what, uh, we're talking about here. So large language models are used for a large variety of different um, tasks, content generation, understanding interpretation, data analysis, code generation, anything that anything with a text output, um, the large language models can be used for. And so what we wanted to do is see the real world performance of these models. Many others have gone um, to, to great lengths to evaluate these large language models. OpenAI released a OpenAI evals repository, providing a framework for this testing. Um, websites like Hugging Face or Papers with Code have various leaderboards for um, testing these models against um, things that their loss model wasn't optimized for, um, whether that be truthful question and answer or uh, a variety of different content uh, evaluations. Okay, so certifications are taken to show that we can be knowledgeable in a certain topic. And so we're wondering if a large language model can, can show the same. So this Turing test of sorts points to the need to sort out which professions are most at risk uh, via a certification test. So how do we go about this? We went around, we went to um, collect certification data sets. Um, so we're trying to collect uh, the test that if you pass a greater than 70%, you get the certification in which you can put on your resume um, and uh, use to advance your career or just uh, learn the knowledge itself. Uh, the models that we're testing here are mainly the OpenAI based uh, GPT line of models uh, with a scoring pass of greater than 70%. And all these questions are multiple choice, um, which is like the preferred method for the automated and objective grading methods for these exams. And at the end, we'll look at some results and uh, talk about the significance of a large language model passing or failing these exams and some nuances in there. And we'll wrap it up with a human comparison. Okay, so what exactly did we do? This is our process. We collect 1,100 practice exams from exam topics. This is around 50 questions each for a total of 5,200 questions. And then in addition to these professional certifications, we also um, append that data set with um, about 1,000 questions um, from 50 tests um, that are mostly skill-based evalu uh, evaluations. So that's IQ tests like the Mensa IQ test or um, other comparable tests. And what we did was prompt these large language models um, in a zero shot fashion to, to test um, what it would be like for this uh, large language model to take the exam without studying for it. And this is our prompt. And I'll put some quotes here. Uh, you are an expert in the Mensa IQ test, the test name, and then we append the question, the multiple choice question with the four answers. And um, from the response of the large language model, we take the letter, um, the letter answer and compare that to the, the correct answer. 
And we, uh, in the chat here, I've put the link to our repository, the certified data set on GitHub. And you're welcome to download and check out that um, data set. Um, in addition, if you have any questions, please you know, throw them in the chat so uh, we can uh, go back and, and see uh, if there's anything to talk about there. All right, so we have our 6,000 questions, about 6,100 total questions. And they are from various different examinations, from medical and legal, finance, STEM fields. Um, and they're kind of split between two separate knowledge um, structures. I like to call it, call it fluid and concrete knowledge structure. Um, so while STEM fields may be a little more concrete knowledge based, so what is the property of this metal? What is the property of, of something? While things like an IQ test may be more fluid based, as in transferring the concept of one a set of ideas to another set of ideas, um, sort of like an explanation-based reasoning approach for that. And these five topics were also found to be the most challenging for humans, um, uh, what they struggle with the most uh, in terms of the scores they get on tests. And so we wanted to compare these um, but also, we also wanted to see the effect of large language models on sensory and emotional experiences. So professional exams that include therapy or counseling um, are something that we wanted to take a look, take a look at as well. Um, but being from more of a research backend um, within the company, we wanted to also look at the computer tests. Um, so all these companies and certifications from AWS, Google, um, Tableau, from cloud virtualization to data analytics. These are some of the certifications that our, our colleagues have or use on a daily basis. So these are the ones that we kind of wanted to focus on that could actually come across our desk. So um, if a resume came across our desk and it had all these certifications, um, we might think twice or not uh, if it came from a uh, large language model. So let's get into the results. We sent our questions with a prompt to our large language model and we scored each of these certifications. Um, and I'll show this same graph at the end, a little more readable format than this. However, uh, let's, let's take a look here. All right. So on the top here, we have uh, the models that we've tested. And this is from the GPT lineup here, uh, 3.5, 3, and th their previous methods. Um, the notable improvement that, that we find is uh, the yellow and gray here, um, the Babbage to turbo difference here. So that's um, an average of around 60% to an average of around 100% with the GPT uh, 3.5 turbo model. So this advance has taken less than a few years. Um, and we think that with sufficient attention to these more challenging um, tests here on the right side of the graph that um, the model would be able to complete these uh, more challenging certifications. But let's, let's hone in on a couple here just to take a look. We have on the far right side, we have the Wonderlic cognitive ability test. You can see that um, the previous year's model scored around 20% and 40% with GPT 3.5 scoring 50%. Uh, another aptitude-based test, an IQ comparison, armed services, vocational aptitude battery test. 15% for the previous years, all the way up to 95%. Another outlier here, sorry, not outlier, another um, test, this one based on emotional intelligence, um, assessment for employment, 10%, 20%, all the way up to 100%. And then this to go more into the cyber, we have the web application penetration tester exam, um, 30%, 80%, all the way to 100%. So let's see what we, let's talk about what we actually show in our final result here. And I'll come back to those certifications and show, show another graph uh, for, for you at the end. Um, so in our paper, we show a complete score sheet for those almost 1,200 professional certifications for the GPT 3.5 and GT, GPT 3 models. And uh, we highlight the overall difference between the models and rank order their performance showing that a passing grade above a 70% um, is possible using a zero shot approach. So GPT-3 last year 
passed roughly 39% of the certifications that we showed it. Um, and these examinations covered a predominantly weighted selection of computer-related tasks. So those are the cybersecurity and um, data analytics um, certifications that we showed before. So these are the ones that are most interesting to, to our industry. Um, more, than 100, uh, more than 100 cyber certifications included a recommended human employee preparation time of at least six months. In these large language models, we were able to do it without studying, uh, which show uh, a, a very interesting phenomenon. Uh, most interesting for us, for us, we have the Offensive Cybersecurity Certified Professional, um, OSCP. This, uh, uh, this red team certification is a valuable job skill for penetration testers, um, especially in our industry. Um, and it's one that the industry and government recruiters reward substantially, uh, substantial salary boost for it. And GPT 3.5 Turbo scores 100% on this exam. So we're going to talk about some of the interesting jobs that uh, ChatGPT, or not ChatGPT, <laughs> that uh, GPT might be uh, good at here. Um, we had a talk earlier today about a calls, um, call center optimization. Um, let's see if I have uh, her name here. Um, it was one. Of, it was the first talk of the day, um, and. It was very interesting. Um, so extend that here. Uh, we show one of the original promises of AI was the the chatbot and personal assistant, um, starting you know way before 2014, 2016. Um, but now you can definitely say that they have been delivered. The chatbots are everywhere. Um, ch chatbots. Um, I looked at some statistics here. Uh, chatbot market. 28% uh, is in real estate. 16% in travel, 14% in education, then healthcare and finance. And that's a total market of about $1.82 billion. Um, so chatbots are everywhere. And we show here with the Avaya test that, chat, um, that GPT can pass these um, and uh, contain, uh, obtain this certification. So as shown in these seven Avaya exams, uh, it passes five of them um, for chat GPT 3.5 as compared to just two of them, uh, just one of them for chat GPT 3. So let's take um, some surprising evidence of <laughs> general intelligence. As a, uh, so we wanted to see what, in addition to those challenging topics for humans, um, we also wanted to look at the emotional and sensory capacity uh, of uh, large language models. And so some non-computer related examples that we looked at were selecting wine for sommelier exams, language translation, driver's education, and various different IQ tests. Um, as shown here, if you wanted um, GPT to recommend you a wine, I guess it would be pretty good because it scored uh, almost 100% on all three of the sommelier exams. Um, for translation, we also see um, a large increase in performance from GPT-3 to 3.5, almost double for Ukraine English and Russian English. And for the IQ test, we also see a, a large performance increase with it completing the Mensa uh, exam at 70%. And uh, it also completes driver's ed. And what's interesting, the beer judge competition uh, certification, I don't know how uh, this AI would rate beer, but you can get the certification for him. Um, another uh, motivation for this list was um, looking at the, one of the most challenging ones. So uh, accountants for the, with their CPA exam, veterinarian, veterinarians for their exams, aviation inspectors, financial planners, and other uh, topics here. For CPA exam, we have 100% with GPT-3 at 95%. Um, for the veterinarian exam, we found 100% for GPT 3.5 and 85% for GPT 3. So let's see what it didn't do well on. So our most notable failures here are amongst this uh, VMware virtualization certification which we found that it passed about 
only two, only one or two of these VM certifications as compared to previous year's model where the scores actually either go up or are 0%. Um, so other than medical or legal bar exam, we have the FINRA series, Financial Industry Regulatory Authority Series 6 exams, which provides um, a lucrative gateway for financial advisors and humans pass the FINRA Series 6 exam with a score of 58% while GPT 3.5 passes it with a score of 100% as compared to the Series 7 exam, which is the, the final, or not the final, but the one that you need to trade for uh, GPT 3.5 only with a 48% for that. Um, another, another interesting one is that it passes uh, the, the teacher certification, the Praxis um, exam, an essential requirement to participate in the US public education employment um, and some other interesting um, nuances here are that notable certifications, uh, failures overlap with certain success areas. So VMware, um, while it doesn't do as well, um, teaching, writing, the practice exam, it, it does well, um, but logical and reasoning for the LSAT, it, it doesn't do as well. And we'll show these, these exams at the end. Um, for example, the low scores uh, associated with writing and Python coding point to some prompt ambiguity in the question submission. Um, so we've all used large language models to either generate code, uh, either ChatGPT or uh, GitHub's Copilot um, to, to code or to assist in the, uh, the starting process of, of coding, so the architecture. Um, and so we see some interesting uh, ambiguity since we know that these models can perform well, but in our test we found uh, the zero prompt nature um, did not uh, perform as well for the writing, even though um, it did pass that practice writing education or teaching writing course uh, certification. So further work is needed to understand whether these multiple choice exams fit the correct format for prompting for the large language models. Um, and, and whether this, this testing app evaluation proves appropriate for the automated scoring. Okay, so let's kind of look at what we did here. So we created this benchmark data set. It's in the chat if you wanted to take a look. Um, we traded this for future testing of new models against prior ones across a range of capabilities um, from the medical and legal to um, IQ test to uh, ther therapy and counseling based test uh, for emotional and sensory uh, evaluation. And these are a couple of the other um, tests that we've seen on those leaderboards that we talked about earlier. It extends uh, ARC and MMLU. These are various tests of intelligence for large language models on topics from, from fluid to concrete knowledge. And um, here is uh, discussion of our in our future work that we wanted to look at. Um, so professional certifications provide uh, confidence that a new hire possesses prior training um, to exercise competence in specific fields. So if someone comes across with their AWS certification, you're going to know that they um, have, uh, they, they can do that work. Um, so areas of particular future interest involve more experience-based testing, such as seeing if a model is parroting some sort of training data, training data, which becomes less influential in the final assessment. So uh, if it's just reciting something that it's seen before, you can't really say that it is um, providing a, a, flu a show of fluid intelligence or transferring the concept from one set of ideas to another. Um, so a notable feature of testing that, that sensory and emotional qualification um, shows that AI or these large language models can actually re respond and interact uh, with humans, um, sort of like a personal assistant, but on the, you know, the an emotional level. Uh, some applications that I've seen come out for uh, helping um, with uh, personal therapy, things like that, uh, show that large language models actually do possess some sort of emotional quotient or some uh, cap capability to engage in uh, these, these uh, conversational contexts.
Um, so this progress suggests that focusing on the latest model shortcoming to lead to high, highly performing AI in the future amongst the most demanding professional certifications, um, in addition to those IQ tests that we looked at that it struggled with. Um, so we, we, we released uh, this data set to show, um, and for others to show how these large language models are improving over time on real world results. results. And so finally, if you wanted to see our human comparison uh, in the chat here, uh, I've posted our Google form. Uh, we extracted 100 random questions from our 60 to 100 questions in our data set to test humans versus large language models. Um, these are two groups of people. We first uh, contacted friends and family um, and people in our company, found around 10 people that took our test. Um, and then we also went online to a website called Click Workers, uh, in which we, we paid uh, people to take our tests. So we have 10 people from our, our circle and then 25 uh, uh, paid exam takers. So we wanted to show how human performance varied significantly with scores ranging from 92 near the top with the large language model performance um, all the way down to uh, about eight. Uh, with the performance for uh, <laughs> random tests. Uh, so this variability highlights the subjective nature of the human evals and that potential for bias and inconsistency. So let's take a look at our, our results here. The top we have uh, GPT 3.5, the 96 for this test, Anthropic, um, their model scored around an 88 and GPT-3 and 83, and uh, OpenAI, or it's not no, OpenAI, Open Assistant found um, a 78 there. And these are an example of our, our questions on the right. This is the first time seeing them. Um, so for that ARM services vocational aptitude battery test, um, these are kind of general intelligence questions. This is a, a, a concrete uh, question and answer of what is not a layer in the Earth's atmosphere, and that's the lithosphere here. And we'll leave you with the results of that previous graph um, for your questions. Thank you.